nation's capital. This as truckers in Scranton, Pennsylvania are also making their way towards D.C. And they're all speaking out, saying it's about their freedoms. It's about our rights. It's as simple as that, that the Biden administration has taken. The states have taken. Mandating you do something with your children. They're, in other words, they're taking the right of the parents away to govern their own children. And these school boards are out of control. That's our rights, our fuel costs, our things, everything that we're paying, especially in the transportation industry. Uh, the regulations on our drivers, uh, the harassment out here. But more importantly, the cost of living that it's costing all of us, get living, living off foreign fuel and everything else. We have it here in this country. If Biden had a brain, which he doesn't. <laughs> um, I love that we ended with that. Uh, but Hegseth, all, all of his comments before that, he's not wrong. And that is all common sense and righteous. Common sense wisdom, exactly the type of thing we hear at Fox and Friends Diners all the time. When you actually go out and respect people enough to talk to them and hear what's actually impacting their lives, you learn things. But what the left does is insulate themselves. Look at Justin Trudeau. He wouldn't even talk to them. Uh, look at what most elites in Washington, D.C., they reject them. They call them things like deplorable and smelly Walmart people. And they pursue policies that make their lives more difficult and less free. God bless these truckers. God bless the Canadian truckers for setting out and doing what they did. But watch what happens. I'm going to be watching this very closely. I know you all will, too. They're already reestablishing Fort Pelosi around Capitol Hill. It was Joe Biden who counseled Justin Trudeau to react the way that he did. Emergency powers in Canada. What measures will this administration be willing to take against peaceably assembled Americans who only want to be heard? This will be a scary flashpoint and potentially very revealing about how far the autocratic tendencies of the left, especially in Washington, D.C., have become. So these truckers are brave for what they're doing. They will remain peaceful. And the reaction, well, it feels predictable, but yet to be seen. That's absolutely right. And Michelle, Pete mentions, you know, listening, listening instead of force. But as Fort Pelosi is being built, as he said, is that the right way for Biden to handle this? No. But first, let me correct. Sergey Lavrov, I think I misspoke in the last segment. I want to make sure I correct that so no one, you know, thinks that I'm nuts, even though I am a little nuts. <laughs> Here's what's not nuts. Here's what's not nuts. Talking to people and listening. If they respond in D.C. with all these kinds of forces, whether it's National Guard or Fort Pelosi or whatever it is, the optics are horrible. Invite these people to the White House, to Capitol Hill. Meet them where they are and talk about this. Otherwise, it will backfire like it did for Trudeau. I agree. These are brave people who just are finally fed up and want to stand up and talk about this and show America and the world that they stand with the Canadian truckers and they stand with all the blue collar workers in America who vaccinated or not are concerned about their freedoms and their ability to, to choose for themselves whether or not they want to stick a needle in their arm. That should be personal choice. We talk about pro-choice and freedom of choice in a lot of other arenas. I think this one is too. Most people have decided to get vaccinated. I'm one of them and I recommend it. But I don't think we should force people to do that. We start on a very slippery slope when we do that. That's right. And you mentioned, uh, I, think, I think that the optics, you're right, backfired on Trudeau. But there was a lot of significant collateral damage there with people losing, yeah. frankly, having their livelihoods obliterated, potentially not temporarily. Right. We see we saw an incredible, uh, frankly, revenge tree occurring on the part of the Canadian government there that that the tendrils snaked toward those even providing coffee for those who were demanding their own freedoms. Kaylee, you were in the White House and experienced a trucker protest yourself. Was it peaceful? It was entirely peaceful. Look, it was an on and unrelated issue about industry standards and shipping costs. Um, but you could hear these horns, and that was what was so interesting. You'd walk through the Rose Garden, you would hear the trucker horns. They were unmistakable, they were loud, but they were peaceful 
all of the truckers were peaceful. Um, and I would advise President Biden to listen to them, to Michelle's point, meet with them. Uh, the polling shows mandates are not popular. The vaccine mandate popularity went from 53 to 43 percent in Monmouth. I always thought in practice this mandate will not be popular. It's not. But President Biden, you can ignore that polling and go about all your COVID edicts, but you're not going to be able to ignore the sound of those trucker horns. Trust me, I heard them loud and clear. Anytime you walk from the White House residence to the Oval Office, you will hear those trucker horns. So listen to them. Call them into the Oval Office. Surprise us all. I think it'd make you, maybe you'd get one or two points up in your polling from 37%. Maybe you'd hit 40. I doubt it, but you never know. <laughs> Fingers crossed on his part. And Lauren, yeah. you know, we obviously enjoy a lot of constitutional protections that our northern neighbors do not, unfortunately. But the reality remains that there are threats of seizures here as well. Let me read you a tweet from the Arizona Democratic Congressman Ruben Gallego. Perfect time to impound and give the trucks to small trucking companies looking to expand their business. Mm. Basically, as we're looking at these convoys of, of trucks crisscrossing the U.S., headed to D.C., potentially blocking the Beltway in time for President Biden's State of the Union, he's saying seize their trucks because they're peacefully protesting. And he's listening exactly to what Justin Trudeau did up north when they decided to invoke unprecedented emergency powers and freeze the bank accounts of about 200 protesters and truck owners who refused to leave the protest. It was about uh, six million U.S. dollars. They have started to give that money back. But what other money was frozen? Mm -hmm. Did people have their accounts frozen if they just donated to to that, that truck or the Freedom Convoy? We don't know. Um, but these are things you would, you would never think would happen. In North America, when 90% of the protesting truckers in Canada are vaccinated, they're just saying, listen to us, talk to us. Let's just take the temperature down and free up a little bit. That's right. Well, at a minimum, those who donated were financially deplatformed and often doxxed, had their livelihoods destroyed and essentially socially shunned yeah. there. Uh, and then, you know, that, that tweet blows my mind. That is government-sanctioned asset redistribution. It's communism. It is. <laughs> All right, and it's frightening, and I hope we do not see it here. Hi, Winner Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click.